Hey, what's going on folks? My name is Alex and on this video, I want to talk about the NCO professional development. What better way to talk about NCO professional development than talking about the DAPAM 600-25, the NCO professional development guide. Kind of makes sense, right? Anyway, there are key things that we need to look at when talking about NCO professional development. Some of those things are civilian education, NCO yes, assignments, and a multitude of things that some are within your control, others are not within your control. So let's start from the top. The first thing is NCO professional development, NCO yes. I'm gonna do an entire video talking about NCO yes and the institutional training uh, associated with promotion and the new systems but it's one of those things where if you are not taking charge of your professional development when it comes to NCO yes then you're going to struggle and I identified this back in 2013 uh, when I started picking up that the rules were changing or had changed at that time I, I saw at least in my career field in my state that there was going to be a gap between the junior NCOs and the senior NCOs. That's how critical I saw the changes in the policies because I didn't see folks taking charge of going to NCO yes and I didn't see organizations putting a premium at ensuring that NCOs made it to NCO yes. The next thing is civilian education. This is within your control. It's 100% within your control. I understand that when I go out there to the blogs and, and I'm watch, and I'm reading uh, what soldiers are writing in social media uh, regarding drills and ATs getting away of their civilian education, got it. I understand. It's going to take a while, uh, but if you start early enough in your career, if you're an E4 promotable, E5, matter of fact, you come out of basic training, you look at the opportunities that uh, you have within your state for cheap or free education because you're a member of that state's National Guard, start researching that immediately and start taking classes. Slowly but surely, you'll get there. The next thing I wanna talk about when it comes to your NCO professional development is leader development lines of effort. Right out of 600-25, paragraph 2 shape, page nine, F, F, yes says the Army uses talent management fundamentals across all learning domains, including assignment progression, development opportunities, broadening opportunities, and outside influences to provide leaders with experiential opportunities required to reach full potential. What does this mean? All this means that the Army is looking at everything that you've done in your career to see if you have breadth and depth of, of experience um, and knowledge acquired over time to be a great leader, right? So when we're looking at building leaders, we're looking at building the future sergeant's major. We're not looking to build the next team leader, right? Because that is a very low investment over the course of 20 years. If we're building a bunch of team leaders, we're gonna run out of senior NCOs that is going to lead the army in the future. The more you move, right, uh, the more you progress and the more you experience, the more opportunities you create for the people behind you. You're grooming the people that are gonna replace you and then you're gonna move on so that person can literally replace you. Well, if you don't move, you're gonna groom the next people that are gonna replace you but they're never gonna get the opportunity to replace you because you haven't moved. Move so other people can move. That's the point of the talent management, right? It's figuring out where to move people, many opportunities, a bunch of times. That's the point. In paragraph uh, three that shape, uh, one of the opportunities that, that is mentioned is the cross component element. What that means is active duty soldiers having experiences with the National Guard and Army Reserve, Compo two and three, and also soldiers from the National Guard having opportunities with the Army Reserve, any active duty. And the reason for that is that 
it creates uh, an opportunity for you to understand how the other side works. My personal opinion is that the reason you need to, as a National Guard NCO, experience other components is that you understand their unique problem sets and you can learn from how they overcame it and you can borrow some of those ideas and, and bring it back to your situation, your component. Remember, if you're an E7, an E8, an E9, you are getting an opportunity to experience what other E7s, E8s, E9s are going through, how they overcome that, learn from them, and then bring it back to your state. That is the importance of the cross-component element of your development. It's extremely important. If you have an opportunity to uh, uh, get an active duty assignment, uh, not just deployments, which is extremely important, right? Uh, and I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, on an ADOS tour, uh, absolutely take advantage of an opportunity, whether it's short or it's long, it doesn't matter. Uh, at least once in your NCO career, get take an opportunity to do some full-time work outside of a contingency environment. Talking about assignments, uh, there's one thing I want to highlight, which is that just like the officer corps, the NCO corps, we have key developmental assignments and then we have broadening assignments. The key developmental assignments for NCOs in a traditional line unit, in a team leader, your squad leader, your platoon sergeant slash section sergeant, first sergeant, command sergeant major, some fields, the regular sergeant major, the operations sergeant major is also a key developmental assignment. It's your key as leadership assignments where you are in charge of a team, group, squad, company, battalion, brigade, division, etc. As the key a senior enlisted leader of that organization or that team or that group that you are leading. Obviously, it depends on your career field uh, or your MOS. Different MOSs will have different uh, key developmental assignments. So consult with the CMS, CMF uh, guide for your particular MOS and find out what those key developmental assignments are. Uh, I, I, it, it's very important, especially for me, to make sure that I have an experience in each assignment because for me to understand what a platoon sergeant is going through, I need to make sure that I have platoon sergeant time. For me to understand what a squad leader is going through, I need to have had squad leader time, so on and so forth. Nothing will fault a leader quicker is a leader who hadn't had their key developmental assignment or skipped a developmental assignment because you don't understand the intricacies of that position and you make bad assumptions and bad leadership decisions, make bad recommendations to your officer counterpart. It's important for you to have hit every single development assignment. Do I need to talk about developmental assignments anymore? Aside from develop key developmental assignment, you got your broadening assignment. So 600-25 talks about four key broadening assignment categories. These categories are broadening developmental opportunities, broadening educational opportunities, broadening training opportunities, and then other broadening opportunities that come from experience. The one that I wanna to touch on specifically is the broadening developmental opportunities. These opportunities are gonna be more difficult in the National Guard because you're limited to the availabilities within your state. For example, it's gonna be difficult for you to be an AIT uh, platoon sergeant because unless you are in the one or two, however many, I don't even know, very limited drill sergeant companies, uh, you will have very limited opportunities to be a platoon, AIT platoon drill sergeant. But you could have an opportunity to be a drill sergeant and be a platoon sergeant at the same time. How? You can join a recruiting command. Uh, I know in my state, the recruiting command is sending their RSP leaders or soldiers that are assigned to the RSP to drill sergeant school. But there are other opportunities. You have ROTC programs, you have the state uh, officer programs that, you know, can eat cadres. If you're an E5, E6, excellent opportunities. 
the RE70 and, and possibly E8 opportunities within the schools as an M-Day soldier, if they are, consider that. That's a good broadening assignment. Recruiting is another good broadening assignment, just like the active duty counterparts. You do drill or you do recruiting, those kinds of broadening assignment, life is good. Check that box. Other broadening assignments include joint assignment, staff assignments, SHARK, SARC, EO, all those things that are additional duties are considered broadening opportunities, right? Because uh, those are, are, if it's an additional duty, it's, it's on paper, hit your NCOER. If you have an opportunity to join a unit temporarily, usually a headquarters, almost always a headquarters, uh, that, that's what you do full time on drill weekends. That's a great experience if that's what you want to do. By the time you achieve or you earn the rank of E8 and you have all these opportunities that's described in the figure, they are already looking at you to start your master's degree or have your master's degree complete between uh, SGM and CSM. Very, very, very important. The reason why I mention that is that the generation coming after me are, are gonna be hopefully higher educated, the military service member, because they, if they, they've had the deployment opportunities, they have a higher percentage of the GI Bill, uh, the systems uh, have been tested and proven and tweaked, uh, where veterans are able to take uh, better opportunities through grants, loans, scholarships, plus the GI Bill. There's no reason why they're not educated, so you're gonna be competing with those people. So if you're the NCO that is not thinking about doing civilian education, in conjunction with the opportunities the military will give you, uh, I don't know what to tell you. You're gonna be struggling. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like it, share it on social media, uh, tweet it out, put it out on Reddit, uh, or any other platforms you're out there. Uh, share a link at the video with your organization if you like it, uh, or just play it on one of your training weekends. All right, see you in the next video. Peace.